So hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I'm continuing my Java multiplayer tic-tac-toe uh, tutorial series. So today I've come here and we're gonna continue working. So the next thing we're gonna have to do for this to work <coughs> is going to be the rendering. So we're gonna start making rendering. So first of all, I've made a few mistakes while in the previous episode, even though we haven't written too much code, there were still quite a few mistakes. So, the first thing, this is the main game, the main game class, it's called like that. First of all, what I want to do this is just call it um, game window, and I'm just going to change that because I just feel like it's a way better way to do it. So that this way I understand the things better, just the better naming, and that's pretty much it. Next thing we want to do is not extend the window, but extend the J panel. And that's because we are going to create the window outside of this class, and there, then we're going to add this J panel to that window. So now, the, the reason is because you can't render onto a J frame. You can't render on it, but you can render on a J panel. And because we are playing tic tac toe, we're going to have to render, of course. So, because we can't render on a J frame, we're gonna have to render on a J panel, and this is why I make this uh, J panel, and that's pretty much it. So for now, we're gonna leave this all blank. Later, more things are gonna come into here, but for now, let's leave it at this. So the next thing we wanna create is a new class, and this class is gonna call be called game. I'm just gonna put it in the game package. And now this is going to be the class, which is going to be started by the main class. So in our main class, we're just going to put new game. So new game. And this is going to pretty much um, just start this game. So here, in our constructor, we want to first create, of course, a constructor. Um, so sorry, uh, my clips um, is kind of flagging. I'm not entirely sure why, but it doesn't matter. So <coughs> here goes the constructor. Um, so yeah, the first thing that our game class is going to need is going to be a window. So now this is going to be the game class which is going to handle all the game logic. While uh, our game window class is going to be the class which is simply just going to render things. And that's it. Or And not only render, it's as well going to receive the input, but that doesn't matter now. So now, now we want to create a window first. So... There we have the window, just um, when, while you're importing things, by the way, is a shortcut control, shift and O, and this pops up. So we just want to make sure we uh, import the GUI, our window, and not the AWT window. So just make sure you don't import a wrong class. So now, we just want to initialize this window, of course. So we're going to do this uh, by putting in the title that we had. This is going to be tick, tac, so pretty much. Now, in the last episode, we put it the width to 800. Now, I'm not entirely sure why I did that, but we just want those two to be both 600. So just leave it at that, okay? Just 600, and that's way better. Next thing we want to do is go to private. Uh, sorry, not go to private. Um, make a new variable, and this time it's going to be a game window. And this is pretty much the game panel, or how should I have called that? I, I really don't know, I'm sorry guys. Um, by the name, it's, I'll just call it a game window. And what I do, okay, <laughs> this is seeming so confusing. I mean, I just hope you understand the thing. So the game window is pretty much a J panel that we add to a window. And what a J panel is, it's pretty much some, it's pretty much a container where you can put things such as buttons and all these things which you can as well render on them. And that's pretty much it. So now we want to add the game window to the window. So window dot add game window. Pretty much we want to add that J panel onto our window. And yeah, by the way, um, before you add it, just make sure to initialize it, which is something I forgot to do, but it doesn't matter. So now this has been added. When we run this now, we get oh my. Okay, I've been preparing for this project already, so. Here is like a little bit more to it. This is the code right here that you can see this second project. So I accidentally ran that one instead of this one. So let's just run this one. Okay, so here we go. We get this blank window. <clears throat> so right now we're gonna start rendering. So the first thing we wanna do is render those lines. And the way you render on a J panel is by overriding the paint method that it has. Pretty much what the paint method does is it just gives you this graphics object. I don't know why it's R0, we're gonna put it to G. And that's it. 
So now we have the graphics component, and graphics component is pretty much something that you use for um, rendering things. You can render lines, images, and all these sorts of things. So that's what we're gonna do. So here we want to use g dot draw line, and pretty much if you if you're new to this, I'm just gonna show you how it works. So pretty much a line has two points. It has a starting point. It has the ending point. Each point has x and y variables. And this line is gonna go from the top left uh, to like 50-50. Now, one thing about Java that I have to point out is usually if you ever worked with coordinating systems, which I think you did in your classes or something, I'm sure you um, learned it already. So I'm not going to be explaining you the coordinating system. Now, the thing I meant to say is that in the coordinating system, your y-axis always goes upwards. So the bigger the y is. Um, the higher it goes. Now in Java, it's just a different story, it's just reverse, so the higher the Y is, the lower you go, and pretty much the zero, zero point is in the top left corner, and that's pretty much it. So I just draw this line, and here you can see this line from there. Now one thing I want to do is, actually I'll just do that later. Uh, no, no, no I'll, I'll do that now. So the thing I want to do is, um, there is a class that extends the graphic. Class. A graphics class is simply the the basic class that you use for rendering things. Remember, there's one class called Graphics 2D, and that's a class that extends graphics. So we just want to cast that to cast our graphics object to the Graphics 2D object. And here we go. So this is how you cast it. And the reason is because Graphics 2D just has a few methods that are going to be necessary for us to work. So actually, it's only going to be only that one method that we need, but still, <coughs> we need to use it. So first of all, I'm going to set stroke. Now, okay, let me just show you. So in tic tac toe, um, we have this line right here. Uh, no, by the way, we just have this line right here, right? And in tic-tac-toe, when we render all those lines, it's gonna look like it's something like, I don't know, like... The lines are gonna be, not gonna be wide enough. And we want those lines to be wide enough. So to make them a little bit wider, what we want to do is use g2d.setStroke. To do this, here in the parameters, it takes a stroke. There's a class that extends stroke, so it makes um, the job a little bit easier for us. So to do that, we just want to go to basic stroke. Um, stroke, that's pretty much a class that extends stroke, and it just things are just made a little bit easier. So here you put the width of the line that you want it to be. I'm going to put it 10 to 10 pixels. So yeah, you put it in pixels, and now our line is going to be wider. Just make sure you're using D to D so that you don't mess something up because it doesn't work. In, um, it doesn't work in G. It needs to be G to D. So graphics 2D. That's why we casted it. So now what we want to do is just draw all those lines. And the thing we're going to do here is I'm going to create a simple while loop. So the first thing is in our game window, when we're setting the height. So in game, here you can see we have this height. Um, with and height here in the parameters. Now, one thing I want to do is not hard code them here, but I just want to make a few variables out there. So, the first is there going to be public static final ints. The first int is going to be the width, um, like this, and it's going to be 600, and the height is as well going to be 600. Now, instead of putting 600 and 600, we're just going to put width and height. Pretty much, this is just a good programming practice, just to make the code, like, easily readable. So in our for loop, getting back here, we want to start with x at six at game dot width. Actually, I'm just going to do one more thing. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually get the public static final in field width. What this is going to do is, this is pretty much going to make be the width of one field, and to get that, there are three fields in one row, so we're just going to divide that by three. And the same for height, we'll field height is equals to height divided by three. So now this is going to be the width and height of one field, and that's pretty much it. So first of all, I want to start our x at the width of one field. This is going to be game dot uh, field width, because 
I don't know if you have this picture in your head, but I hope you do really. I don't know the best the better way to explain. Pretty much just we don't want to start from zero, but you know what tic tac toe field looks like, right? So we're gonna make our x start at that. Then we're gonna make sure that our x is less or equals to than um um two field widths because the way that I just go faint, so I can just explain you. Um, I'm kind of having troubles. Like, okay, so here we have this first one, and here we have the second one. This is where it starts, and this is where it ends, right? The x zero, x six hundred. So this is going to be x two hundred, and he this is going to be x four hundred. So we only want these two lines to be rendered, right? We don't want this one and this one. We want these two, and that's why we're gonna make it go from x is equals to game dot field width and make it um, smaller or and just make the for loop go while it's smaller or equals to then game dot field width times two and now we just want to increase our x of course by game dot field width okay now that we've done that we just want to do the same thing for the y axis so here we just want to replace this with y game dot height. Sorry, um, just make sure to replace all these things with y because sometimes it happens that you keep width or something, or you keep y and then it like does the wrong thing. Just make sure you just replace it all uh, if you're copying like this. Now we want to draw the first line. So draw a line. Um, first of all, um, actually I made one mistake. I was like a little bit. To doing things too fast. We don't want these four loops to be one in each other. Um, we want them separate. So G to D. Make sure to use the G to D and not G because if you use only G, then the stroke is going to be very. How? Uh, I mean, it's not going to be as wide as you wanted it. Now, just use draw line, and here we have the X. So we have the X of which we want it to be. Here we put X. Here we want to put it. Put the first point is at x and 0, y. The second point is, of course, going to be an, uh, on x and on 600, which is pretty much game dot height. Because it goes down. And now, if we run this, what you're going to see is this. Now, we just want to do the same for y. So, I'm going to put g to d dot draw line though of course we're starting the x is zero and here we just put y for this x we use game dot width and here we put y again i don't really know if you understand this so i'm just going to paint one more time so uh wait a minute um okay i'll just open it so pretty much this is the x oh my god this is my art though x <laughs> So this is that line for x, and this is y. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. So here is x. It's x here. And the y here. So pretty much, we just move it all by 200 all the time. So here you have 200. Ah, I can't really type in this paint. Here's 400. And the same for this side. So... Pretty much, when we're going with y, we're going 200 down every single time. And when it comes to the x that we choose, first of all, if this is the y, so if we're right here, this is at 200 y. With the first x we want here is 0. So this is 0x, right? And we want to go here at the 0x, then the sign is going there, and then here we have 600x, which is equal to the game dot width. And we want the sign to go to here, and so we use that y and we use game that width for our x and that's pretty much it so that's it guys we're done with this episode thanks a lot for watching um we've got our nice tic tac toe field actually there's one thing i want to point out uh, i'm not sure if you noticed it but if you've taken a closer look as you can see that this field up there is actually bigger than the field down here and that's gonna make problems when we start when we start rendering different things the reason why this happens is because when we set the size of the window, it doesn't set the size of this thing inside the window. It doesn't set the size of the content pane. It says the size of the whole window, including the borders. So what we want to make sure 
is that we just set the size of the content pane instead of the size of window including the borders. So for that we just want to go into our window class and here instead of using the set size we want to get that thing that is inside and that's called the content pane. So now once we have the content pane I'm going to set the preferred size. Now, I'm not entirely sure why can't we just set the normal size but this is pretty much the way it works. What the preferred size is, preferred size is pretty much um, let's say um, preferred size is pretty much um, what it should be, but it is not yet. And now, it's preferred size, so it will not yet be set. And now, all we need to do to set it is just call the pack method in our JFrame. What the pack method in the JFrame does is pretty much just takes a look at all the preferred sizes and then just packs the window to make it fit the size, and that's it. And one thing I also want to point out is we're using the set resizable here. So, um, I've had a little bit of problem with this method, and that is that if you use set resizable, if you put it somewhere after this method where you set the preferred size, the set resizable method for some reason sometimes it just changes the size of the window and I'm not entirely sure why that happens. Just make sure that you have it before you pack the window and that way everything's gonna be perfect. So now when we run this you can see every single field is the same size and now everything is working perfectly. So thanks guys for watching. We've started rendering there. In the next episode we're gonna continue with rendering and uh, there's a little more things I have to explain. Um, I kind of think like I'm talking too much, so my videos are like getting long for some reason, and I don't know why. Um, but I will try to keep them for next time. Really, I don't know why. So I want to cover more things in this tutorial, but I apparently couldn't. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video.